Hey guys, it's your boy Brandon Bell right back on the scene again as you all know once again We back again with the dollhouse bill creative styles model Lovers hobby lovers who are deep into it and take it real serious. I am back today Please forgive me for my attire. You know, I'm looking, you know, kind of rough, but you know, I try to forgive me. But let's get right on into it. Let's get right into it. I think I had needed to come in today and give, I think, a little slight review on a little bit of hand painting, especially when you're dealing with little basic or what I say cheap paint. You know what I mean? And I use this right here. You know what I mean? So basically, you know what I mean? It's real good for, you know, with the shangling with the dollhouses. And I think I need to talk about this right here. People have, uh, for the, let's get, uh, before, I want to say, the people who just now started, or if you just now starting out to paint, and I wouldn't call you, let's say a beginner. You know, that's the word for it. The proper word is a beginner, but I don't even like that phrase for all word as a beginner. I just say the ones who are just starting into their craft, especially with dealing with hand paint, uh, anyway, when you, and I'm doing a little touch up here. Let's, let's get right down here to it. I'm doing a little touch up right here on the side, right here, as you can tell right here. And, uh, to get this blue off the edge here. And when you paint, you always want to go in one direction, especially when you're using a brush. You want to go in one direction like so. And you got to visualize. You got to watch what you're doing. Because you will see the lines in the paint. You will see the lines in the paint when you're doing your paint. And with the shingle look, you want to just let it just lay on thick as a muck. You see what I mean by when I put on it? You want to lay on, lay on real thick. But you don't want to get too messy. And you watch how it just, uh, if you can see here. And you just, you want to be light with your brush, the way you stroke your brush. And make sure you, you have to be the one to get your paint to level. Because if you just slap it on, it's going to look real ugly. And the way that you know it leveling it out is... When you spread it on, you want to have to like flush the paint out. Make sure it's just nice and level, nice and flat. You know what I mean? Make sure your, your paint have no grooves in it. Because the way your paint look when it's wet is the way it's going to look when it's dry. It's always, when you paint, it always start out real light. And then it dies, and then it dries dark. Excuse me. It dries dark. Oh, I just broke off my flag uh, pendant. How to get that little thing like that? It really eats ah, me. But like so here, you, uh, and you want to always, when you, especially when you're painting, you got to take your time. You cannot rush it. And some require more than one coat. Usually, painting require more than one coat. Especially, I don't. Me personally, they they always the old school way is always you usually gotta prime something, but. Since I've been painting, because I've been painting now, uh, I'm 35. I'll be 36 this year, the good Lord's willing. And uh, I've been painting now since I was, uh, let's, first of all, let's see if I can find this uh, paint here. I've been, uh, my opinion, I guess I'll come back to that. I, but like I was saying, I've been painting now since I've been 19 years old with brush, <laughs> all, with, with, with all, dealing with all kinds of paint, even painting with models, painting real houses. Doing trim work on houses and apartments, uh, uh, especially do, uh, painting with my own. You know, I also started my own little business at one point in time down in Georgia. But anyway, I said you want to take your time. And you want to pay attention to what you do and get all the fine edges because that's what really people really look for. Little edges and grooves like so. And if you start off with a, you see how that's real thick right there in that edge right there? You see how that's real thick right there? If you can see that, you see how this right here is real thick? You just want, if you want to just level that out, 
Make sure you, you make sure this is just light brush is going across. And you watch how this paint just levels out. And you have to be the one, like I say, to level it out. Like so. Once again, like I say, if you, the way that you lay your paints on, the way that it looks when it's wet, is how it's going to look when it's dry. That's going to blend in real smooth. That's going to blend in real smooth. You see what I'm doing is covering up all the spaces that I didn't cover up before. And that's another, this is another reason why it's best. And you want to keep the grooves on your paint, on, on, on your shingles too. So you want to spread it all the way out because you don't want the grooves to disappear. Because that's going to take that shingle effect away. And what I mean by the grooves like right here. You want to keep them grooves. So you spread it all the way out. Keep them grooves. You see how you still can see them grooves? You don't want these grooves to disappear. Because that's going to take that shingle look away. And you don't want that to go away. At all. So you don't want that to go away at all. In the background there, y'all forget that's my wife there with her allergies. She's always like that. <laughs> that's my love there. I think I had need to, cause people be always be like, they're not satisfied with the way they paint come out. But like I say, you have to work with the brush. And make sure you get it. It's, it's, it's especially getting up in the heart in the corners. It's not easy getting up into corners without touching the other side, unless you skill. That come with time of painting. <laughs> it's not. Nice. Excuse my my head was in the way. Y'all excuse me. I am so sorry about that. See how I just spread that out? And you still see those grooves right there? Now we're gonna come back and uh we're gonna catch we're, we're, now we're gonna come back and uh catch all this right here that's sitting up in there in between that groove. It's gonna be pretty hard there too. Let me see how I'm gonna do that. I will have to come up in like that there. And that you don't want to do with your brushes. You never want to leave your paintbrush out with paint on it. If you already don't know, that's like a beginner's rule. You leave your paintbrush out with the paint on it. You're going to damage a lot. You're going to damage a lot of your paintbrushes. Usually what I do, I just keep me a little, a little, a little, a little, a little uh, I cut me up a little water bottle and I put me a, a, a little, just detergent it, just like a couple drops in it. Nothing to have it real sudgy. Just something you need to break the paint away from the brush. And I just, you can keep your brush today overnight, couple days, three, days, three, four days. And you know, that won't ruin your brush if those are for the ones who do, does not like to clean a brush every single use, which that is most likely what you're supposed to do. But back to the painting here, getting these grooves here. I'm going ahead and I'm doing touch ups because when I initially did it, initially was starting on it, ooh, it was very, 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 very time consuming. And I was so ready to see the finished product. And you want to make sure your bristles is not, it's not where they can touch anything. It's not all like looking like this here. If your bristles look like that there, that's not good because they're going to be getting all over to spots, touching spots that you don't want to touch with paint on it. So you want to make sure it's a nice smooth side. Usually what I do to do that right there to get that like that, I usually just take a bit more paint on it and do it like this here because the paint is going to make it just flat right on out. 
Look how that look. You want to keep your brush just like you want to have your brush. Let me get that up here. You want to have your brush just focus. You want to have it better focus. You want to have your brush flat just like this here, like so. No bristles hanging, especially when you're doing fine edges, like so. Like so. Because that new bristles is going to be touching everything else and it's going to make you be like, oh, that looks so ugly. And we're not going for that ugly look. We need everything to look uniform as possible. Are you trying to go as much as possible with that professional look? The manual way. Now when that dry, that's going to be perfect right there. That's going to be perfect. That's going to be so perfect right there. And I'm going to come through. And you see over here as I'm touching the other side up also over here. Because I feel like most beginners, like I say, keep in mind, keep this in mind that you want to Keep all your paint leveled. Let's get this camera here. Let's get my camera here right. Hold on, let's. Okay, here. Yeah. Let's get some. Let's get some reach over here. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. <sighs> That ain't gonna work. Uh oh. Excuse me. Here we go again. Me and my camera skills. Oh. Okay, let's first of all, let's sit this here. Back right here. Okay. Okay, get that light right. Okay. Back over here, touching this side here. Just look pretty good on this side. It's just the base paint for the for the roof to have the edges looking real, real good. I, I keep stepping off because I keep going, going off, you know, manually washing my brushes. But if you can tell, if you can see here how that paint's drying, it's going to dry pretty good. Pretty, 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 pretty good. Nice and level. We're going to go through also and do that edge of the white to bring that white back out. When you, the more you paint, the more you will know how much paint you need on the brush, how much paint you need on whatever you paint and how much paint it would take, how many coats it take. You pretty much can eyeball that during time, how many coats you would need during that first coat. So what I'm saying is like you would know how much paint to lay on when you initially dry it and how much to spread out and where it still won't look bumpy and so forth. So what I'm doing is, is filling in all these cracks that makes it look real ugly that I really rushed on. Going back, touching up, and you can always touch and fix up what you mess up. And that's the good thing about your creative stuff that you do. You can always fix up, especially in painting. Especially in painting here. Okay, so, and if you can see here, you see how that's drying? Look how that look. I want you to, if you can see that right there. Look how, uh, look, look how that, look, look how that look. And all that wet paint is gonna dry. You see how uniform that look? Look how that look. 
I'm trying to keep the angle here and do this here. I'm over here on this side here, so I need to come here, put this right here on this side right here. And I'm straightening up this side over here, which would be my left side. I hope they see, might be, the, you, might be you all right side. It's pretty humid in my house if y'all see me. Sprite with the, whew. And it is tedious. Because you have to be focused on anything you're trying to stay focused on it to it tend to make you kind of, you know what I mean, nervous of getting in any way places that you don't want to. So, all right, now what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to go ahead and we're going to uh, touch up. Let's see, this, so we're going to go back on this side here. So what we're going to do is. So we're going to go ahead and. uh. Okay, let's see here. Back. Let's get this angle view right here, back right. Where are them headphones at? Excuse me, you all. Excuse me. Excuse me. This is my kids with their online learning. So we're going to, uh, this black right here, we're, we're, we're going to, we're going to straighten all that up right now. We're going to straighten that up right now. Excuse me, y'all. I go wash my brushes. Okay, here we go. And excuse me for my uh, leaving and coming back. So we're gonna do the. Uh, we're gonna get the. Uh, this is what I'm using for my white. If you want to know what I'm using for my white here, I'm get it from Hobby Lobby. Doesn't smell dries like <laughs> instantly. If you ask me. And what I really love about it is because I'm working in house, it doesn't have the smell like at all, like really at all, at all. This is oh, this is the wrong one. This is supposed to be Ivy Freight Flake. Excuse me, y'all. Hold on one second. Excuse me. 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 Excuse me